Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So um, we are going to talk about melodrama in cinema. We um, and I would also like you to refer to one of the lectures that uh, is a part of this course on uh, the great Hindi film Diwar and apply the features of melodrama in cinema. See, while you are doing this course, you will understand that whether I discuss um, a Hindi film or a Hollywood film or a foreign film, if you know the theory well and the concepts well, you can apply all these uh, the aspects to, of that concept and all that theory to any uh, cinema from any part of the world. So, while talking melodrama, the keywords here are high drama, excessive emotions, interplay of uh, and the dynamics of class and sex. The term melodrama as you know uh, is used very pejoratively. We often say, oh, do not watch this film, it is highly melodramatic. But then also uh, uh, the fact has to be taken account that melodrama happens to be a very successful uh, genre. No, if not a genre, a style of filmmaking. We call a film uh, melodramatic when it has excessive sentiments over the top emotions, over the to top uh, and larger than life characters. And it intends to squeeze emotions out of us. Uh, one example is uh, the traditional opera where emotions are always over the top. The term melodrama has its roots and origins in the Greek word melos, uh, which is used for song to suggest a song. And in the early 19th century, many plays were produced with a musical accompaniment that heightened the emotional aspect of the various scenes. For example, Sweeney Todd, The Barber of Fleet Street, which was made in 1979 uh, for stage, but has also been recently made um, for uh, as a film directed by Tim Burton. Melodrama is not a recent concept in literature. Uh, think of a play such as Oedipus, Sophocles' Oedipus, uh, which was uh, uh, you know, which came into existence in 429 BC. And a play such as uh, Oedipus, where the hero inadvertently kills his father and ends up marrying his mother, but when he realizes the truth, his uh, wife or mother hangs herself and Oedipus blinds himself, that is his way of self punishment, and lives in a state of self exile. So, that was melodrama at its peak. So, Melodrama has always been in existence. The idea is to produce excessive emotions. You are also familiar with the role of songs and background scores play uh, and what an important role these uh, elements play in increasing the sentimental aspect of a scene in Indian cinema. Thus, uh, consider that uh, what M. H. A. Brahm says, the term melodrama and melodramatic uh, are like, you know, they can be extended to any work. And um, we have also seen that how uh, most of uh, these melodramatic uh, works, whether in drama or prose fiction or even in cinema, they rely on implausible events and sensational acts. Melodrama in this sense was, uh, uh, you know, uh, in earlier Hollywood cinema was a standard fare in good versus evil kind of plot. Mm, D. W. Griffith's great film Birth of a Nation is an example of this kind of film. Okay, so, good versus evil is a standard fare of melodrama. Now, uh, these days we know that uh, uh, we use the word melodramatic to dismiss a film as uh, worthless. However, this belies the fact that the melodrama as a film genre is as worthy as any other and as an aesthetic, it uh, has uh, countless elements to it. Okay. So, you have uh, movies ranging from uh, or ranging between westerns and epics and comedy 
and uh, uh, melodramatic content or aspects can be formed uh, found in any of these genres. Drawing on influences as wide ranging as uh, uh, Greek tragedy and sentimental Victorian novels, melodrama was a hugely popular theatrical form in the late 19th century like slapstick comedy which had its roots in uh, vaudeville it adapted easily to the silent films as well. Uh, melodrama placed a heavy emphasis on expressive gestures and visual iconography than on dialogue and naturalism. For example, a Birth of a Nation uh, that was made by D. W. Griffiths and uh, melodrama often had tragic outcomes. In Hindi film, you can think instantly of films such as Mother India, Divar that we uh, that is part of this course and also think of uh, a film like uh, uh, Mukaddar Ka Sikandar starring Amitabh Bachchan which is uh, one of the most uh, popular entertaining but highly melodramatic film. So, uh, stories of good versus evils were told using familiar motifs and archetypes and creating over the top emotions in melodrama. The themes of drama the, which is the oldest stage form and art form uh, were exaggerated within melodramas and the liberal use of music often enhanced their emotional plots. You think of songs and background scores and how they uh, uh, you know serve to enhance the melodramatic, the excessive emotional content or quotient of a film. Often film studies uh, refer pejoratively to the uh, the genre of melodrama, uh, calling them unrealistic, pathos filled, campy tales of romance or domestic situations with stereotypical characters. They often include a uh, central female characters, I am now talking about the women's pictures that would directly appeal to feminine audiences. The subgenre like this is typically looked down upon by uh, critics and especially the uh, more elitist kinds of audiences. Uh, from our own example, in recent times we can think of a blockbuster a star studded film by Karan Johar that is Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam which was made in 2002, where you feel all the um, uh, leading characters are good hearted and pure uh, characters, but they are victims of circumstances and it is a tear jerker, it is a VP. At the end uh, uh, it ends happily, but then every emotion is squeezed out of you through the running length of the film. Again in Suraj Barjatiya's romantic melodrama Mano Pyar Kiya which was a 1989 film. In Suraj Barjatiya's romantic melodrama Mano Pyar Kiya which is a 1989 film, uh, we find again uh, pure characters versus stark evil characters. Okay. It was a huge blockbuster starring Salman Khan and uh, a young Bhageshri and um, uh, the song and dance situations help to enhance the uh, entertainment, uh, entertainment as well as the melodramatic content or quotient of the film. Again some of the greatest uh, films of the 80s are made by Subhash Ghai, for example Hero, Karma <coughs> and also uh, Ram Lakhan and Trimurti as well as Pardes which was made as late as in 1997 and all these films are uh, phenomenal success, great entertainers, but extremely melodramatic and you have uh, uh, you know extremely larger than life characters here with stark good and evil versus evil characters. Very sentimental, but very popular and of course, um, all great musicals as well. And the, uh, we have to remember that evil characters have no redeeming features in these types of these categories of melodrama film. You have to also consider cinema of Rakesh Roshan who has uh, given us films such as Khun Bhari Maang and uh, Koela, Kahona Pyar Hai and how melodramatic they are, although extremely popular and hugely successful. One of the uh, greatest examples of melodramatic films from Hollywood is uh, a Duel in the Sun, which is directed by King Vidor in 1946 and, 
uh, um, interestingly it was branded lust in the dust at the time <coughs> of its release. Uh, this film which stars uh, Gregory Peck and Jennifer Jones and also Joseph Cotton is a classic epic western produced by David O. Selznick um, who was uh, um, you know uh, he failed in his desire to make it the western equivalent of his earlier civil war epic Gone with the Wind. So, this film was produced by the great David O. Selznick. However, the film was uh, not so successful in spite of having every formula implicit. Perhaps it was thought uh, or it was believed to be too lusty for those times. It is an overwrought script based on a 1944 novel uh, by Niven Bush uh, and uh, it is about a sexually charged half breed woman uh, played by Jennifer Jones. Uh, who becomes the point of contention between two brothers, one a lusty brother played by Gregory Peck and other the good brother played by Joseph Cotton. So, again this is a reworking of the Cain and Abel opposites, one brutish and one refined. The film is set in um, Texas in the 1880s which is like uh, you know again a sort of western, so you will find lots, lots of horses and terrain and open terrain and Texan landscape, beautifully shot, uh, <coughs> very lavishly mounted film and quite a melodrama. Uh, <coughs> interestingly, it also opens with a prologue with, which is spoken by um, Orson Welles and uh, there is a fade in on a mountain in the shape of a face which is a squaw's hard rock that is bathed in the bloody red color of the settings and so what we are seeing is that mise en scene tells us the kind of in the ex, uh, of films it is going to be the excessive emotion that you are going to find in this film. Um, I would like you to um, uh, I would like to draw your attention to the opening prologue from the film. Deep among the lonely sun baked hills of Texas, this is the prologue which was uh, spoken by Orson Welles. The great and weather beaten stone still stands. The, Coman, the Comanches called it Squaw's Head Rock. Time cannot change its impassive face, nor dim the legend of the wild young lovers who found heaven and hell in the shadows of the rock. For when the sun is low and the cold wind blows across the desert, there are those of Indian blood who still speak of Pearl Chavez, the half breed girl from down along the border and of the laughing outlaw with whom she here kept a fine a final rendezvous never to be seen again. And this is what the legend says, a flower known nowhere else grows from out of the desperate crags where Pearl vanished. Pearl who was herself a wild flower sprung from the hard clay quick to blossom and early to die. So, this is the way the film uh, the film opens and the stage is set that uh, you are going to find a uh, uh, you are going to uh, see a tragic tale of, or, um, of love or a doomed love story. Now, melodramas achieved a particular uh, status with the uh, um, you know the uh, film academicians with film academicians showing interest in the works of W B W D W Griffith, Lon Chaney, John Stahl, Nicholas Ray, Vincent Manley, Max Offels, Otto Preminger, and Douglas Sirk. According to uh, film critic and expert Christine Gladhill, the study of melodrama as a cinematic genre is a recent development. It achieved public visibility in 1977 when the Society of Education and Film and Television commissioned papers for a study weekend. Melodramatic plots with heart tugging, literally tear jerking emotional plots requiring multiple, uh, you know, uh, we are talking about those kinds of films where women go and just cry their eyes out. So, these films require multiple hankies or handkerchiefs. 
usually emphasize sensational situations or crisis of human emotions. Again, consider Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam or Duel in the Sun. Okay, so failed romances, stories of failed romances, friendships, strained familial situations, tragedy, illnesses, deaths, neurosis, emotional and physical hardships um, within everyday life. So, uh, you can also consider a film, uh, film such as Terms of Endearment and also Mommy Dearest, which was based on Faye Dunaway's uh, daughter writing about, uh, it is her story actually, it is based on an autobiography written by Faye Dunaway's daughter, I am sorry, not Faye Dunaway's daughter, but by Joan Crawford's daughter, who uh, um, uh, was apparently mistreated by the great star uh, of the classic golden age period. And this uh, movie, Mommy Dearest, was based on that autobiography with Faye Dunaway playing Joan Crawford and it is also considered one of the uh, most melodramatic films ever made. So, what kinds of characters we find in a melodrama, victims, couples, evil hearted blackguards, pure and good heroes and heroines, pure, pure and chaste heroines, virtuous heroic characters, uh, they suffer uh, in melodramas and are presented with tremendous social pressures threats, fears, improbable events, difficulties with friends, communities, lovers or family. So, the melodramatic format allows the characters to work through their difficulties or surmount the problems with endurance and dignity. Often it ends in uh, sacrificing or death, but then uh, that is the way a melodrama is constructed. Melodrama can also have several categories, but some of the important ones are the woman's picture, the romantic drama and the maternal melodrama. For, uh, for such kind of cinema, film theorist Molly Haskell drew, um, draws our attention to women's films and family melodrama and raises questions about the aesthetic and cultural significance of this kind of cinema. There is also another uh, important theorist, Thomas Elsasser who uh, according to whom melodrama can be analyzed through complex mesosome and ideological criticisms. Elsa Sir also considers family melodramas of the 1950s as the peak of Hollywood's achievement. In Hollywood, Douglas Sirk is considered one of the most melodramatic filmmakers. He is known for his melodramatic pictures and this is reflected through his tendency to create a strong mesosome including uh, very strong primary colors, contrast of dark and light, exaggerated acting and gestures and emotional access. So, the entire framework of mise en is employed here to create a particular kind of a situation. As in most works of melodramas, telling background music, I am using a word telling, it tells you what to feel. Okay, this kind of you know, so you have slow romantic music playing in the background, you know this is a love scene, you are supposed to watch it with that kind of a mindset. You have action scene with lots of uh, um, you know heavy thumping background music and you are supposed to enjoy it accordingly. There is a death scene, a tragic scene and there are violence playing in the background, you are, you are to feel that this is, you are, you are told to feel sorry for the protagonist, you are told um, that this is a tragic sequence. Okay. Sometimes filmmakers who are innovative, experimental and more radical, they try to subvert these situations. Think of a uh, shaitan where a chase scene is punctuated with a remix version of Hawa Hawaii and Khoya Khoya Chaan. Okay. So, filmmakers also uh, try to experiment with background, but in melodrama that is not possible. So, telling background music was another great hallmark of a uh, Cirque cinema. Uh, a re-evaluation of Cirque's as an author, it uh, pointed out to the ideological critique that his ironic mise en scene operated on 1950s middle class America. Cirque's major Hollywood films include All That Heaven Allows, All I Desire, Magnificent Obsession, Written on the Wind, There is Always Tomorrow, The Tarnished Angels, A Time to Love and A Time to Die, and Imitation of Life. 
Melodrama in all that heaven allows is central to its emotional impact. Uh, the hero played by Rock Hudson that is Ron Kirby, he uh, enacts a character called Ron Kirby. He is a gardener representing all that is natural and verdant. He shows uh, the heroine Jane Wyman who is a widow, the colourful world that is all around her but that she has never seen. The movie starts with Ron clipping a branch covered in golden leaves from a tree that thrives in a so called home of love. Later the branch turns up in Carrie's flower pot, flower vase. But the colour comes into play before Ron is even a major part of her life when Carrie opts to wear a low cut red dress for her um, uh, date with uh, someone uh, called Harvey. He is a pleasant old guy who um, either cannot uh, acknowledge or cannot handle that uh, her still vibrant sexuality uh, has not died along with her late husband. For the interiors, Sirk dials back the colour uh, and uses bits of framing to tell his story. There is a famous television shot at the end where, uh, where Carrie's children gifts her with a television set and ask her to stay at home and she watches her own reflection in the television set. Mm, she has lost the love of her life. Ron leaves, uh, walks away. She gives up on Ron because she is uh, too much under the pressures of society and her family and that is the way her children want her to be. Yes. So, that she, uh, she should be restricted to home and not uh, uh, you know go around in search of love. So, the uh, it is a very telling uh, shot where she ends up at home in her living room watching television. So, this is a mise en scene that Sir uh, uses very effectively um, to show us that Carrie is finally boxed into a fate that she cannot escape. The film's plot could uh, perhaps be described as a perfect melodrama as all of the principles like marital family and social struggle are so deeply tied to one another that if just uh, one changes then the entire uh, plot is affected. Okay. So, this is the way uh, melodramas are you know constructed. Another great example is uh, Mildred Pierce, Michael Curtis is directed. Joan Crawford playing the title character where Mildred Pierce uh, divorces her uh, husband Bert um, who is a good for nothing character still a pleasant man but and after that she plunges into a different kind of social class. Um, she has to struggle in order to support herself and her two daughters. She enters the workforce as a waitress um, and her uh, daughter Veda she views the work as uh, beneath their dignity and lowly and degrading. Throughout the film all Mildred desires is to fulfill Veda's wishes and in time graduates from table server to business entrepreneur by opening her own chain of restaurants. Veda recaps, uh, Veda on the other hand reaps the rewards from Mildred's hard work and constantly desires more. Uh, and takes all that Mildred has to offer. The disastrous end of the cycle signifies that the harder Mildred works, the harder she falls and this is one of the greatest uh, women's VP, women's melodrama ever made. In more recent times, you can consider films such as James Cameron's Titanic and its melodramatic feature, The Rich Girl Meets Poor Boy and the doomed love story and also Terence Malik's melodrama The Tree of Life starring Brad Pitt. In recent times we have uh, the enormously successful soap operas on Indian television most of which are extremely melodramatic in content. So, the idea is that melodrama lives on and remains continues to remain a very popular genre despite its critics. So, thank you very much and we will meet for our next class.